Hi, Scott. Hey, Jamie. How are you? Super good. I'll get the unprofessional part of my interview out the oh, way. Oh, stop it. Okay, stop it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I love that. And by the way, I have one. It's just so weird if I wear it. <laughs> you know what I mean? At least I mean? you never forget just... your name if you got stinking yeah, drunk. Yeah, I just, I do have that t-shirt and I think it's delightful. And yet it's, I can only wear it at home. Uh, I got, I had to get one. So it's lovely. To I talk love to. that you have one. <laughs> um, congratulations on the film. Thank you. I saw it this morning. Fantastic. Oof. Great, great fun. It's really, really good. Again. Knocked it out of the park once again. Um, I was curious. Obviously, you've gone back and played Laurie again. Um, I wondered when the re the, this idea came to you. Do you would you have would you have had a different reaction if they'd have said to you, "We're making another Halloween." However, we're rebooting it, and Laurie Strode was played was going to be played by somebody else. Would you have had a a negative reaction to that because you have such a you know, connection to her over the years? If they were going to reboot Halloween and have Laurie Strode played by another 60 year old woman. <laughs> Actually, I didn't think of that in my question. I would have taken That's... to Twitter <laughs> and literally all it would have said was Halloween <laughs> reboot another 60 year old actress WTF question mark. <laughs> Um, I would and, have expected nothing less. <laughs> you know, I, I, that would have been, yeah, no, if, if that would have been wacky, if they had told me they were doing another reboot of Halloween starting in 20, you know, starting kind of remaking Halloween, of course, I mean, it's, it's not my movie. It's, it's, you know, if they were remaking it with a 17 year old girl or 19 year old girl playing Laurie. But in a funny way, I think what the writers have done is they've turned Allison into Laurie. Mm. You see, I think Allison, and I didn't see it at first. I've only seen it now that I've seen this new movie. Allison is smart. She's, um, you know, she's got a little bit of the feistiness that Laurie didn't have in the original movie. But I really think Allison has become the Laurie character. So I could imagine you could make movies with Allison for a very long time. But if they yeah. had just rebooted the original movie with an older woman, other than me, I would have been like, I don't think so. Bit strange. And obviously, I mean, you, you, the first one, hugely successful. The the one that you did in 2018, hugely successful. Um, what, what do you think it is about David and Danny and the rest of the guys that have they've found this great synergy with John's original version and these new ones? What do you think it is? Why do you think they're perfect for this, this imagining? Why have they been so successful with it, do you think? So I know it's a quick interview, so I'll be brief. Um, David is a Southern boy, a film nerd. He l works with his film school friends, just like John Carpenter. Nick Castle and Tommy Wallace were Nick Ca were John Carpenter's best friends. Michael Simmons, um, David's cinematographer, is his best friend from film school. They, um, so I think there's great similarity. They're both Southern boys. They're like Southern gentlemen. There's something prescient in David Gordon Green and Danny that they made a movie about female trauma mm. written in 2016, 2017, shot in 2018, that came out in October of 2018 that collided with the women's movement, with the Me Too movement and women all over the world rising up against the aggressor that had kept them in pr the prison of that aggression. Um, that blew my mind. Mm. How did they know that they were going to make a movie about a woman who was traumatized for 40 years and fights back? Then I thought, okay, well, they're just, you know, geniuses. Then they write a movie in 2017, 2018, we shoot it in 2019 about the concentric circles of a community of rage and violence and trauma about a mob rising up saying that the system isn't working and we are going to fix it in our own way. And then around the world, there are uprisings, there are uh, um, social justice riots and protests. There is a, a attack on the American Capitol. Um, people are angry. People are enraged saying that the system is broken. So 
what's up with David and Danny? Seriously. <laughs> and if you read the next movie, it'll your mind will explode. Seriously. Your mind will go like, wow. It's, they have, I truly believe when you go look at these movies 20 years from now, you will look at this trilogy of movies and, and it will be a history lesson under the guise of a slasher film, but it will be the best history lesson of any movies being made anywhere and I mean, including even documentaries. Like this explains it in such an interesting way. Fascinating Absolutely. to me. Absolutely. Well, my time, my time is up. So thank you I for know, your time. But what, I will, so sorry. what I will say, what I will say, if you've got James Cameron's number, the world is waiting for a True Lies Blu-ray. So if he ever gets time, we're all waiting for a high I definition will, version. You know what? I'll text Lies. him. He will not text me back, but I'll text him in that way. You will feel yeah. seen and heard and get, by me. Get Arnold to do something about it or something. I don't know. But yeah, we're I, waiting. I, by the way, I think you know him well enough. If you think I can get Arnold to do anything... <laughs> Uh, then you, you you are under some weird delusion and are taking some weird <laughs> drug. So good luck with that. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, Simon. Absolute pleasure talking to you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.